Hey everybody, welcome to the channel, and I'm Dizzard, uh, Dylan, whatever you want to call me, right? Um, basically trying to revisit my X4 series and update it with what is current after the 2023, uh, I guess, balance pass updates is what we can call that. Uh, Cable got above Deadpool, Wolverine, Colossus, uh, and it really has changed the team for better like for better like there, there is no worse about it x force is just really really good right now um and i think people who have put in the reps and put in like the stuff i don't think the play style themselves have changed to these characters but like because of the buffs you're able to do a lot more you're able to have a lot more forward aggression you're able to um have that center line pressure i i, I truly think to answer one of my big questions here is like what is X Force doing now? Um, I, I truly think that they're a mix of an attrition and a scenario team now. Uh, I think you can very easily lean harder one way or the other, depending on your splash characters and your your individual play style. But I, I do think that it's very very good to be an X Force player right now. Um, I don't feel like I am running like I'm running seven. I think seven or seven or six X Force members, like affiliated wise, and it feels really good. And in testing with everything, I have no complaints of where X Force is at right now. Uh, I feel really good with them. Um, now, when I'm looking at building an X Force roster, what I really am trying to do is bring in characters that are enhancing that gameplay. Either people that survive are mobile, uh, deal with extracts because that's probably the biggest pain point for x-force characters themselves is they're not necessarily wanting to go after the extracts um they want to have that forward pressure going and you could really look at x-force in like i guess three paths one would be going scenario heavy where you're splashing in characters like grunt parent characters like fury electra daredevil um shadowlands daredevil that is and going with this mindset of i'm going to be really good at scenario and i'm going to hurt my opponent while i do it uh you can also go super tanky and he healing factor characters and abuse exceptional healing with adding characters like lizard uh you have 23 already wolverine deadpool and these are all good characters you could throw in nova if you really wanted to to really hammer in that healing factor uh, aesthetic so you have like a tanky build you have your scenario build and you can go straight attrition build where you're just adding something like cgr uh, cosmic ghost rider you're adding something like a thanos you're adding like try to boost dice you're not like you're not really bringing thanos to kill things you're bringing him to supplement your team um i'm not really a fan of that one so much but cgr uh, i could see having fun with here um and then you have the mix and i'm very much kind of in the hybrid stage to where I have a build where I can go super defensive. I have a build in my list where I can go scenario and I have a build in my list where I can just go kill. Um, and I think that's probably the best place to build an X-Force roster at the moment. Um, maybe if Bishop comes out and he is X-Force and maybe he changes that path. If Nightcrawler changes X-Force, if he's X-Force affiliated as well. Um, that might change things in the future, but as of right now, being October of 23, um, it very much is, you can go attrition, you can go scenario, you can go kill, or, uh, go tanky, and I really do think that the best build is going to be a mix of these three, and tuning your splashes to do that. Um, so let's go ahead and answer the question of, like, what is X-Force doing now? And when you really look at it, what is X Force doing now? You have cat and mouse. You have cable being able to just nuke people within range three. Um, a lot of our characters just take people out within range three. So it's it's something that you kind of have to think about when you're building is how do I supplement this? How do I uh, add to this? And I I look to splashing characters that either like Dynamo is a great choice because he can help keep me alive. Uh, CGR again is a good choice because he just puts so much pressure out there. Um, Fury, Shadowlands, Daredevil, or Electra is good because they shore up some extract game and allow me to use my characters that are affiliated to go in and really just put some pressure on. 
Uh, I think X-Force is very good at center line pressure. And what I mean by that is basically if I have a C lining up my center line, I have every X-Force character is able to move and attack. Cable's able to just start attacking without having to move or spend actions on the move movement. So you have a lot of center line pressure going on. And that gets the game. It kind of sets the stage for the game on what you can accomplish in your round one. Um, so that's that's kind of what X Force is doing now. Is they're applying center line pressure, they're abusing healing factor, they're um, and they're playing a decent scenario game on top of it all because of the fact that they have a really good kill game. I guess a good comparison would be maybe maybe. Magneto Brotherhood, to be completely honest, um, because Magneto Brotherhood is always good at holding his own in the attrition game, as well as keeping up a scenario, if not going harder on scenario. Um, I, I kind of find that interesting. Like, I'm probably called out. That's a shitty example, but uh, when you kind of look at it, like old Magneto Brotherhood is kind of similar in what they were trying to do. So when we look at why you should play X-Force, um, I think that question has really changed. I used to say is just, well, you like the characters. There's no real reason like to play X-Force other than that. Um, but you should play X-Force because you want to play an aggressive team that doesn't just lose on scenario. You want to play a team that has mutants, but you don't want to play X-Men. You don't want to play Brotherhood. You want to play this strike team. And I think they are more of a strike team than they ever were. Because like, what does a strike team do? Uh, they get in, they achieve the mission, and then they get out. And they're just deadly. Uh, and that, that, that's really what X-Force is. They they get in there, they kill, and then they get out. Um, and I, I love it. It's, it's super fun to play that way. <clears throat> and let's see. So different builds and X-Force looking at affiliated and splash characters. So I got the pictures up here. So we'll go ahead and pull these over. Let's go ahead. Boop. And boop. And... So the biggest thing, when we look at Cable's card, right? Uh, let's see. Let's go ahead and trim this up. Because I don't really... Okay, that works. All right. So when we look at Cable's card, he's still 334. Um, that didn't change. So he's not the tankiest dude in the world or at all because of him being 5 threat, right? So, But he has his shields. Um and his shields really help him out now more than they ever did because he has the power to shield and shield and shield and you can keep shielding and it's okay um you just always have power with him with how much pressure he puts out on his attacks um the biggest thing that we look at with what's changed is we see this plasma rifle attack it's still range five still five dice and if it's within three he gets to reroll two dice in the attack roll this is huge because now only does the X-Force leadership actually helps us out even more. Because let's say you roll three hits, uh, a blank, and a skull. Well, now I can X-Force leadership that skull. And let's say it turns into a blank. Well, now I got two more rerolls. So then I go from a lot of times rolling just three hits to end up having a total of five. And that, that helps him out so much because it gets his power rolling. We've always said um, Cable... Once his power is rolling, he's good. But he had issues of consistency with his attacks. So then we go body side by one. This ability is just great. Um, it's the same as it's ever been. He just uses it to get around. A mega level threat. He's got one of the best throws in the game. It's, I'd say, probably top three. Um, and his shielding. Uh, I've always said in the past, shielding, I didn't really care to shield people unless they had some sort of defensive tech like count blanks or got rerolls on it. Like Psylocke, Deadpool... Domino were like great to be shielded, but Cable himself sucks at being shielded. Um, splashing characters like Iron Fist or Guardian or um, Luke Cage are great because you shield them and they're just gonna like, like cool. I got five, I got six dice now, um, and I count blanks. Cool, <laughs> this feels great. Uh, using your shield to like help characters out that have defensive tech that helps them out a whole lot but now you have the power that you're you can just shield cable and it makes him a five five six which is nothing to scoff at um but granted it, it still is just dice um and that's that's really it i think a lot of play patterns that you'll be seeing with cable nowadays will be he's like more than ever just the cat and mouse target because you can cat and mouse cable 
and then body slide up, and then now he's just on the center line. Uh, it makes it to where he can double tap and throw round one. And typically you're going to shoot, throw, shoot, and you might even burn brace round one with cable. You might just take out a character with him. Uh, it's it's insane how much pressure he can get going early. And on top of that, he's holding an extract. He's getting a secure. Uh, he's doing all these things round one. He is just a playmaker for round one and every round after that. Uh, talking with Omnis from Omnis Protocols, we, we kind of like looked at Cable as if like he's a character that you really want to be activating every single turn or every round rather. If you have a round where you're like, I don't know if I'm able to activate Cable this round, you're you're not in a good spot. So you need to be looking at his activation as this is like one of my big playmakers. Um, he's going to get stuff done. He's going to put out either a daze, a KO, uh, or just really just lay the hurt onto my opponent. And he's just so much fun to play right now. Uh, cable, cable hype, right? Uh, but that's that's really what it comes down to is you really just want to be body sliding around double tapping people and throwing stuff uh i highly recommend until they burn brace um right I, I, it's really just shoot throw shoot um not only that because one it it can help get rid of brace if they burn it and then you kill them anyways because you shoot them again or if they don't brace and the throw takes them out well now you can shoot somebody else um or move uh, but shoot, throw, brace. Uh, shoot, throw, shoot is pretty much his play pattern. Uh, body slide to get to where he needs to go. And that's that's really how simple it is. All right. Um, when we look at other characters who have changed within the affiliation, I think Deadpool is the other big one. Uh, Deadpool, I I would argue, is probably like Cable Deadpool. That's uh, you're playing X Force. You're playing Cable Deadpool. Um. This is like really like he is a scenario player. He's a killer uh, and he doesn't die. Uh, like people always say, like, man, he's only got four health. He's only got four health. Um, I want him to be flipped because on the backside, he's got six health with exceptional uh, access. And he like he's got three, three, four with a reroll. Um, it's really not that bad. Like he doesn't really die. I don't know if I've lost Deadpool all that often and if I have I really don't remember like it was like something that, like he should have died to but he's a playmaker he is like like he's like chef's kiss right now for me I, I play him every single game and he's like my go-to three for x-force um mostly because he's efficient he's got super good action economy with his you can't spell legendary without leg day uh spins two and he gets to play two. he's basically got his own body slide um He's got the Merc with the mouth. He gains a whole bunch of power, and then all of a sudden, my opponent starts losing power. It's great. He actually has the gainer on Bane. Uh, yes, you can't pull off the triple Bane, but it's you never really did. And if you did, you were sinking a lot of resources to do this. So the fact that it gains power now is really just huge. Because uh, let's say like like round one, like mind thoughts with Deadpool. Um, you don't really need to cat and mouse him. Because Cable wants it, and you don't really get a whole lot out of him being cat and mouse unless you have uh, Infinity to where you can cat and mouse him onto the Infinity. He gets the extra power. He can leg day, but then he's still not even like on the point, so he can move, grab something, leg day away. But it's just it's it's not that great. Um, but what he really does is he moves, he shoots somebody. He probably gets his Bane Bane trigger. So now he's gained two power off of doing attack. Gets granted it is dicey and you kind of need it, but I think it's something like 40 something percent to actually pull off Bane Bane because he has the X Force reroll and he has his own reroll. Um, so it's, it's pretty good to pull it off. And if it doesn't pull it off, then oh well. Like it, it is what it is. But like his like best thing is like move Bane, Bane Bane, and then uh, leg day to get onto the center line. And then he can interact or grab. Um, it's 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 fun, and he just like dances around and does all sorts of stuff. Dance party on his or maximum effort on his other side is still just good. It's such a good spender. Uh, the fact that he can't be pushed or advanced is insanely good. Um, like he's just an all around just insanely good three. It used to be twenty three was the go to three to play. 
Um, but now, honestly, I play Deadpool every single game, and I don't regret it. Uh, the other big change was Wolverine. Um, he's still good. He's like he's he's dicey, but like when I need somebody who's gonna go in and just like kill stuff, I probably take Wolverine, like an E E map that I don't really need a whole lot of extract going. Like like researcher, I like him for researcher. I like him for um secures i don't have to pay to flip it's very much like i really enjoy wolverine for what he does he like he's the best at what he does he's gonna go in he's gonna be dicey and he's gonna kill stuff um colossus is great i forgot to pull his card up so give me one second right here um so colossus is great because of the fact that he um he he's just tanky tanky and he just eats everything he wants to be hit taking hits he wants to use that spender he wants to um just you know throw wolverine fastball special is a hell of a drug uh it's just it's so good being four three three six health um he's 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 fine uh my biggest complaint about him is like you have to pay to add the dice um his front side he'll typically just like kind of melt a little bit he'll eat a couple of attacks and then he'll flip and then he's just better because he counts blanks um he's got the throw which you can use from time to time but you're really just there to taunt um the taunt so the i have to be within range two of you to block it not my own people that hurts a little bit because it, it lowers the playability of like where he can be because now you're just jamming him down your opponent's throat and hoping he eats everything and lives um, X slam though, like if I have the power, I just X slam like wild stagger seven dice. You should hit it. Uh, three power. Um, this is what he's trying to do: just X slam, eat attacks for my my buddies. But this also kind of makes him like it. It really depends on which way you go with your build. Like I said, you have the hybrid, you have the attrition, you have the scenario, you have the tanky. He absolutely makes your tanky team. He absolutely makes your um scenario team arguably like he makes you want to play mutant madman like go oh, cable wolverine colossus with fastball special on mutant madman uh, that sounds like a good time to me um so there's there's all these different options going on now and different builds and we're in really a whole new world when it comes to what x-force can do and i really kind of wanted to use this first episode to kind of just talk about that uh talk about why um things are different now and it's really like you look at those characters and they give you a whole entire different um starting point because before you'd have to splash characters that would have to make up for cable you have to splash a character that would make up for my lack of doability um and there wasn't really a reason to play x-force um and now there's every reason to play x-force the characters are great pretty sneaky sis is like just better because of the fact that i have more affiliated characters i'm trying to put on the table um, and I tell you what, that that card has saved me so many times on just, cool, I'm just not going to get hit here and be able to run away with scenario or lay the herd on you while you can't do anything to me. So pretty sneaky is like up in value. Cat and Mouse is also up in value because it just turns Cable on. Um, it also gets Psylocke going early because she can Cat and Mouse onto an infinity and then use her TCE to... Um, move up and hit the person on the center line as well uh so it's 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 cute but honestly cable just gets cat and mouse it's it's really just a let me turn cable on earlier is it needed is it like needed every game not really but it's fun and it works really really well um because cable could for all intents and purposes not use cat and mouse short move up body slide shoot once and then he's still doing something but i just i love the output he gets by shooting twice throwing something and being on the center line it's just it feels really really good but this has gone on pretty long i'm gonna go ahead and end this here and we'll get started with a series of talking about x-force going into what crisis cards tactics cards uh splash characters um this is just basically my primer for the x-force 2.0 series so I hope you guys enjoyed this. Leave a comment, like, surprise, with the, 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 subscribe, all that stuff. And we're going to, you know, show the world why X-Force is great. Thanks, guys, for watching.